We're back with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for us to talk about food security in Nigeria. Nikagule will be joining the conversation. Farmers in the country under the ages of United Integrated Farmers Association of Nigeria have scored the regime of President Muhammad Buhari law in tackling the nation's current food crisis. Uh, the organization said that there have not been serious intervention in ensuring that Nigeria had food efficiency uh, since the current government came on board eight years ago. Uh, you know, for the last past five years, there had not been any serious intervention in food crisis hunger. I think that farmers have not been supported adequately and especially those in the grassroots. They also stated that apart from those who have been at home and the calls from family and friends' images, uh, they see that the cost of food, one, uh, a lot of people are very unhappy. Even the staple common food and that can be produced is expensive and unavoidably uh, for the average Nigerian. And so uh, this has been the conversation that a lot of people have had. We have Nika Gule who joins us this morning from Bainwe to make sense of uh, the conversation that uh, these farmers are having and their concerns about tackling the nation's current food crisis. Uh, Nika Gule, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Messi. Uh, good morning, viewers. I'm actually in Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. I beg your pardon, sir. Thank you so much. But uh, uh, i like us to delve into the thoughts of, I mean, the concerns of the Nigerian farmers. They have said that the Buhari administration had failed in tackling food crisis and ensuring food security. Do you really agree with them? I agree with them wholeheartedly. I agree with them 100% because we have not even started agriculture in Nigeria. Agriculture in the modern sense, the 21st century modern economy agriculture is yet to start in Nigeria. There's something that I tell people, I say, in the stone ages, in the stone ages, there were certain things that we were doing, for instance, um, our mode of transportation was working with our, with our bare feet. Our mode of uh, communication was shouting across uh, family homes. Our mode of dressing was probably some leaves around our waist. Our mode of uh, housing was probably some caves and all of that. Fast forward to the 21st century, Nigeria has upgraded in every facet. We now have beautiful homes beautiful auto automobiles we 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 have a beautiful clothes we watch tv digital tv we have smartphones and all of that but there is one thing that has been left behind in all of this one thing that we have not upgraded and that is agriculture in the stone ages we we used to do agriculture by physical uh, work farmers bending down with hoe and cutlass Stealing the soil. Fast forward to the 21st century, Nigerian farmers are still bending down with hoe and cutlass and tilling the soil. And until we upgrade agriculture, just like we have done in every other facet of our life, the issue of food insecurity will still remain with us. Actually, agriculture is the mainstay of the Nigerian economy. It should be the mainstay of the Nigerian economy and not oil. Because right now, as we speak, there are countries in the world, like the European Union, the EU. The EU says by 2030, which is just seven years away from now, they are not going to allow any automobile that is consuming petroleum products on their roads. So no automobile that is using diesel or petrol which we in Nigeria are taking as our mainstay of our economy. How can that be the mainstay of our economy when it's so endangered? But there is no nation in the world that is going to ban food. There is none. There will be no nation in the world that will wake up one day and say, by so, 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 yeah, we are not going to uh, allow food again. Food must be consumed by every of the 8 billion human beings on earth. And so, that is the advantage that we have. We have the comparative advantage. How? 
because we have the one of the most fertile lands in the world matched by a beautiful climate we see the sunshine at least eight to ten hours a day and that is that is the sunshine that the crops need to grow we have everything and we have the population to go into the farms and do the work but the problem is that we have left agriculture behind when we have upgraded in every other facet. And for us to upgrade agriculture, we just simply need to mechanize it so that farmers are no longer using their waste. A farmer that is using his waste, what he will cultivate in a day, or what he will use a year to cultivate, a tractor will cultivate it in a day. Okay, a uh, single uh, day. Nick, 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 I mean, yes. I mean, you, you, you could go on and on and on um, in support uh, of um, this uh, this group of farmers who are saying there's currently administration of Muhammad Buhari law when it comes to uh, food security. Um, but but we, we're made to understand by the Minister of Agriculture, Nigeria's Minister of Agriculture, just earlier this month, uh, Muhammad Abubakar, um, that. Uh, uh, you know, farmers in the country have made more money under the Buhari administration than under recent previous administrations. You know, they made more money. In the last eight years, you know, farmers have never had it this good, is what he says. You know, when uh, he, po he points to the fact that when President Buhari was elected in 2015, he made it a point to turn Nigeria into uh, an agricultural giant. You know, and, and that they're making so much money. Now, he gives some examples. He talks about, for instance, the rice revolution project of the president. You know, that, that um, the, the, the farmers have bought into this. Nigeria is a shining example uh, of, of this in Africa. As we speak, Nigeria is number one in Africa when it comes to rice production. I can tell you, Nick, for a fact, that Ghanaians are telling their government, see what the Nigerians have done. Can't we stop importation of rice? They can import rice in Ghana for, I mean, for, 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 for eternity. They said, okay, we need to start planting rice. Because Nigerians are doing it. Other African countries, Liberians, Sierra Leoneans, they eat a lot of rice, are saying, see, Nigeria, they are producing rice. Can't we do it? That's number one. Number two, Nigeria, apart from being number one in rice production in the entire African continent, is number one in cassava production in the entire world. In the entire world. And, I mean, I'm sure the agriculture minister has his data. When he says, quote, farmers, small, medium, and large, have made more money in the last seven and a half years than in previous administrations. So are we sure that it's all doom and gloom for, for the agricultural sector in Nigeria? Well, uh, uh, the, the minister of agriculture can put out his data. But we are Nigerians. We live in Nigeria. We see these things. I mean, nobody is going to come to tell us that it's daybreak in Nigeria now because we are in Nigeria and we know that it's daybreak. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture should understand that whatever gains you may have thought have been made in the agricultural sector have been undone by the insecurity in the country. All over the nation, anywhere you hear of IDPs, internally displaced persons. These are farmers who have been pushed away, driven away from their farms into some camps. They are farmers driven away from their homesteads into some camp all over Nigeria. Any way here about RDP, these are the kind of people. So that alone is something that the minister has to grapple with. But that aside, granted that farmers have made more money. We're talking about the control. If farmers have made so much money, then why is poverty on the ascendancy? Why is poverty on the rise? That's incongruent. People can't be making so much money as the minister is talking about. And, and data on the other side, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics is saying that Nigerians who are now poor are increasing in numbers. Because this, this should be the farmers who should not have money to be dealing with uh, their, their, their economic needs. You see, what, what we're talking about here is a student who was posting 5%, 5% performance. And now somebody is saying, okay, because the student is now posting 8%, the student has arrived. The student hasn't arrived. The student has not even got to pass mark yet. 
The student has not got to President Buhari himself in one of his broadcasts considered that 85% of Nigeria's arable land is not being cultivated. 85%. And who would have expected that after eight years in office, the president represented by his minister should be telling us that we have moved from 85% uncultivated to just about 60%. Or fifty percent uncultivated. That's the kind of statistics you're putting to us. But, but, not but, some but, but, uh, amorphous uh, numbers Nick, Nick, that about, cannot be that, Nick, that does not have Nick, a pericle uh, uh, basis. Nick, you're talking about insecurity, and and that is of course we need to acknowledge that uh, government is not the one who is attacking people, but government could, could argue that in spite of the the attacks on innocent Nigerians, you know, by bandits and terrorists and, and criminals and what have you. And the government is has done all they can do to make sure that the situation doesn't get out of hand. I mean, I'm sure we don't have uh, scarcity of food in the country today. Uh, I'm sure we don't have a famine, even though despite these uh, challenges, you can still go to the market and buy your food. You know, you can go to the market and buy your your crops or your food stuff. You know, your your livestock. They're they're everywhere. I want to point you to another. Uh, uh, um, moved by the federal government. You know, in conjunction, that's the Ministry of Agriculture and the CBN. You have what you call uh, the Anchor Borrowers Program Initiative under the CBN, you know, that is meant to catalyze the productive base of the nation. It's a major part of the economic plan of the, of, of the federal government, and it's been quite successful. This Anchor Borrowers Program, you know, so still some of the things the federal government is putting in place. You Are you failing to see the 13 rice pyramids? Or 13 million bags of rice that were unveiled in Abuja, you know, some some time ago. Uh, before I answer your question, let me just uh, uh, talk about the fact that you said uh, if we go to the market, we are, we are seeing food. The food you are seeing in the market, a, 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 a huge quantum of it is imported. Nigeria is still importing food. You spoke about uh, we being number one in rice production in Africa. We are number one in importation of rice in Africa. No, no, Nick, 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 you got it wrong. Benin Republic is, is number one, not Nigeria. In importation? Yes. Okay, you, you, they, they let us understand that the rice coming to Benin Republic is actually heading to Nigeria. How many people are in Benin? I, would, I, would, I don't have the data, but I believe Benin Republic could be like 5 million people, at most 10. The whole rice coming in there is heading into Nigeria, where the ones consuming the rice. And then you talk about rice pyramids. It is not about rice pyramids. The, the rice pyramid should translate into reduced cost of food. Because the more you have supply of food, the less the cost. At the advent of this government eight years ago, it was a bag of rice. I can't remember exactly, but I believe the bag of rice. All right, we seem to have lost uh, Nick uh, right there. I, I'm trying to calculate mercy what the cost of a bag of rice was at the time he was referring to. I can't quite remember. It means that uh, <laughs> a lot has happened since then. Um, do you remember how much a, rice, a bag of rice cost at the I time? Don't, I don't remember. You don't remember. <laughs> you know, a lot has happened since then. You know, let's say I remember during the lockdown, while trying to get Nick back, a basin of Gary was sold at, I think, about 500 or 500 naira thereabout in the city I lived in. Yellow Gary, which is my favorite. Okay? Um, that I've stopped taking it about now <laughs> because I have to try watch my tummy. But, I, you know, when I look at the, the, the budget given to me by the care, uh, caregiver at home, okay, this is what they say, okay. When the lockdown came, within a matter of hours, when lockdown was announced, it spiked to 1,000 there and 1,005. Lockdown has ended. Gary hasn't come down to what it was before, you know. And you can see that um, the, the, those in the markets are making, they're making a lot of money. And I think that's what the, uh, the minister was saying. You know, but if, if these farmers are talking about scarcity or food security, um, I, I know that food security does not just involve what you see around here, but stockpile in case of any, you know, eventuality, you know. So um, it, it's, an, it's a concern, but we cannot ignore the, the strides, the efforts of the federal government, which is what I was trying to, to you know, to, to, put, to put to Nick to see what he, he will say, you know.
Um, but this is this is what it is. Nika Gule, um, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you very well. All right. I don't know what happened, but the signal just went off. Unfortunately, uh, let's just say that the network hasn't been very friendly and favorable for us this morning. Um, so quickly, uh, I also like us to look at you know some efforts because at the end of the day, uh, whatever efforts that you have, whether from the federal government or other parts uh, of the system, it's also geared towards ensuring food security. I know that donor agencies have responded in several ways uh, just to help improve the standard of living, especially after, you know, we're not saying that uh, conflict, these communities are vulnerable, and there's been conflict in these areas and what have you, but uh, how come we haven't really attained, you know, that level? How come we still have uh, these complaints and reports that we're having, even with the response from donor bodies? We haven't attained uh, the level of food sufficiency we should have wanted, uh, neither have we developed the agricultural sector because governments are not giving any attention to this sector. Like I said in my opening uh, remarks, agriculture should actually be Nigeria's mainstay of our economy because that is where we have the most comparative advantage. And so you see that government is not giving uh, due regard to this. Yes, uh, like Kofi mentioned, uh, the CBN's anchor borrower scheme and all of that. Yes, they are good initiatives, but what we're saying is that they are not enough. They are not unlocking the kind of value we should see in our agriculture. Uh, there is a video I actually sent to Messi. You know, I, I, I wish I did it in time so that you will have it to show to viewers. It is a video I captured as I was landing into Heathrow Airport. I wanted to show Nigerians what agriculture is about. Because when you jump into the air in places like the UK, you are going to see four natural features on the ground. You will see a body of water. You will see a... Nick, I, I don't know what's up with the network, but I can also, we can also show Nick the area of you as you forest, okay. you will right. see a settlement where, where they live. Rest, rest of what you see. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, Nick, um, but listen, we, we lost you for a second, but you're, can you you're hear back. Me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, please go on. Okay, yes. So I, I was saying that that video that I, I would have wanted to be shown to viewers, it, it shows that when you jump up in the air in a place like the UK, you are going to see only four natural features on the ground. One, body of water. Two, forest reserves. Uh, three, a place where they live, a settlement. And the rest of the land in between these other three features is cultivated. Totally cultivated. There is not a single land of so these three features I've mentioned, which is settlement, forest, or water that is left uncultivated. You will see it in that video. Yeah, but, but, but if Nick, 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 Nick if, 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 you, if you descend, I would encourage you to book a ticket to go to Port Harcourt. As you are descending, you're going to see lots of farms descending into Port Harcourt. Farms? Farms. You will see yes, one, of the largest, one of the largest palm oil plantations. You could ever see it. You know about it. Reason palm, you know about it. Yes. Plus smallholder farms. In Port I lived in Portacourt, I have landed in Portacourt, you will see those plantations. But what I'm saying here is that that should not be the case all over Nigeria. But Nick, Nick, Nigeria. Nick, maybe our, our, our farms are not close to airports. I don't know. But you know, let's look at the history. Okay, let's look at the history. Um, the output, national output of rice, according to CBN governor, Godwin Mayfield, has moved from about 5.4 million metric tons in 2015 to over 9 million metric tons in 2021. Nick, in seven years under Buhari, we've seen, you know, effective collaboration between the farmer groups, There's several of them, not just this one, talking, and the federal government. And they, it's seen a, a significant improvement in productivity per hectare of the smallholder farmer from about 2.4 metric tons per hectare in 2015 to between 5 metric tons per hectare in 2021. You want to look at livestock production. Recent estimates indicate Nigeria's national head comprises of 18.4 million cattle, 43.4 million sheep, 76 million goats, 180 million poultry. Okay, this is what we're looking at. And most of this, this is an improvement. From, from what you had in the BS prior 2015 is what we're hearing from uh, the federal government. So, I mean, may, are we not, you know, painting a gloomy picture, we ignoring some of the little progress you've made? 
improvement, yes. Improvement, yes. But this is improvement of a student who was posting 5% performance and is now telling us I'm doing 10%. Still way below pass mark. You know, see, the whole data that is being churned out now is being destroyed by the fact that Nigeria is still importing a significant quantum of food into this country. We should be and we should be a food exporting country, not a food importing country. Do you know I received a shocker of my life during this war in, in uh, Ukraine? The shocker I received for my life is that they say because of the war in Ukraine, uh, uh, wheat supply, wheat import into Nigeria is affected, which I agreed. Because everybody knows that we are not cultivating enough wheat in Nigeria. But the one that shocked me was that they said vegetable supply to Nigeria is also affected. Vegetables. Nigeria, with affected soil, with this climate, with the population to do the agriculture, we are importing vegetables from uh, Ukraine. That is shameful. I mean, when people churn out this kind of data, they should understand that agriculture is a low-hanging fruit that we have refused to pluck. When you go about the countryside, because I drive around the countryside, like today I'm leaving Abuja to go to Benue, where I will go and vote. I will drive for five hours through the countryside. Do you see tractors? Do you see tractors on the farms? You see human beings bending down to till their soil. Is that agriculture in the 21st century? This thing is before us. So we shouldn't be importing food if these statistics that the CBN and Minister of Agriculture is putting forward is true. Why right, are we having hunger in the country? Bonika Gule, as we coast this conversation down, uh, we've had several programs, government-related programs to tackle food security or ensure efficiency in food security. Uh, I'd like you to respond to it. Over time, we've seen that they have failed. Thus, once upon a time, we had the Operation Feed the Nation. I mean, you want to go on with some of these policies. There's also a recent one where, uh, about four months ago, the vice president has said that the uh, special agro-industrial processing uh, program will address food insecurity and create millions of jobs. Uh, that's in, you know, we're looking at about 2025, about 2030. Your thoughts. Why have some of these food-related programs failed over time? Uh, very lofty ideas. And do you also think that the recent one would see the light of day? Yes, you are very correct, uh, Messi, that we have had this program, Operation Feed Invasion, I remember it. We also had Green Revolution, I remember that. And we have had all these uh, programs over time. But they have not impacted our farm on our farmers. Our farmers are still going to the farms, as to speak today, with their hoes and cutlasses in their hands, tilling the soil with their brute force. A farmer that does that could probably produce five bags of rice in a year. If that farmer was supported with tractors, with farm equipment, that same farmer would produce 500 bags of rice in a year. Imagine a farmer from five bags to even a hundred bags, even if he produces a hundred bags. You can see that that farmer's economic situation will change. It will change because he will now have a lot more money to take his own economic decision. We're not seeing these things. So we see data, but on the ground, we see nothing. Like I said, that travel through the countryside. I don't see mechanized agriculture that I see in a place like the UK. Yes, we cannot become the UK overnight, but what progress have we made? All these programs that you have listed, including the recent one, if you go to your village and ask your people in the village who are farmers and say, have the government impacted you in any way? They will tell you the government has not impacted them. They have been left there. And another sad thing, let me tell you one thing, Mercy. Another sad thing is that when these farmers struggle and, 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 and cultivate with their brute force energy, these, these uh, crops, after they harvest the crop, they still lose a significant quantum of their harvest, post-harvest losses, because nothing is in place to process these uh, products. Like if you go to Benue now, all the fruits that are being produced, because all the fruits will ripen at the same time, they are rotting in a way, because there's nothing to process them, turn them into juice or some sort of consecrate for local production or for export. So there's a lot of challenges that the government is not tackling. And so if the government just goes to tackle, uh, uh, if, if a body has a cancer, then somebody just went and treated it with Panadol and is going to the high heavens to shout that, I am treating this body, I'm making progress. There's no progress at all. You have given us a, a heartfelt, you know, um, you know uh, uh, 
view right there, um, and of course uh, giving us the uh, the situation in the UK. I hope we can we can we can play that video so that. Um, uh, Messi, if Messi goes see, to Amasa, she will see the see, video. See, yeah, I, I, no, I, I've, she sent it to us. We can see it right there. But I, I want yeah. us to, to look at because I mean, um, if if we must be fair, we look at the statistics that um, are available to us uh, from Statista, which is my these days my favorite um, uh, statistics or data source. Um, it shows that the prevalence of severe food insecurity, and I hope that we can display that on the screen for us to see uh, the prevalence of severe food insecurity in nigeria from 2014 to 2021 has actually gotten uh, has increased let's call it that uh, so they say from 2014 to 2016 we had uh, the prevalence of food severe severe food insecurity in the country was at 11 percent of the total population um 2015 to 2017 it was at 12.3 percent of the total population 2016 to 2018 it was at 13.6 of the total population. 2017 to 2019, 15.1% of the population were, uh, were experiencing severe food insecurity. And then we have uh, 2018 to 2020, 17.3%, and 2019 to 2021, 19.1%. So we can see um, from uh, 2014 you know, till to, to last two years, it's been a progressive increase um, uh, you know, of, of severe food insecurity in the country. And of course, when you talk about food, you talk about hunger. Um, if you look at the, the Global Hunger Index, you know, the APC guys will tell you that in 2017, hunger, Nigeria was 84th out of uh, about uh, 121 countries in the Global Hunger Index. But in 2022, if Nigeria was 84th in 2017, it's gotten worse because in 2022, Nigeria ranked 103, okay, out of 121 countries um, where they had sufficient data to calculate the global hunger index. And um, this means that Nigeria has a level of hunger that is really serious. Um, but tying that hunger to food sufficiency, you know, we can do that all day. But let's look at the state governance. You know, this, this, this fixation on the federal government when it comes to agriculture, to me, is worrying because Nigeria is so huge. I know the federal government is huge, but the state governors are the ones closest to the grassroots who have... Uh, uh, also a significant role to play. What's your assessment of, 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 of the role the state government governors should play and are playing in making Nigeria you know, food self-sufficient or food secure? I agree with you in total. Uh, first and foremost, the statistics that you have, you have uh, laid out now totally destroys whatever efforts that the federal government thinks they are making. Uh, that will still remain at the bottom ladder of food insecurity in the world. And now coming to the state government, that is our national government, both state and local governments, they are not doing enough at all. They are absolutely doing nothing. And for me, this is why I believe that the next parliament must do something about local government autonomy. Because the local governments are actually the government at the grassroots. They are the government at, uh, right there with the people, with the farmers. And if the local governments were empowered, the local governments would start large agricultural schemes like land clearing, uh, uh, tree crop planting, and all of that. But the money that are made for local government, the state governors just seize this money, sit with it in the capitals, and they just tell you know nothing about what happens to these to these uh, monies. So the governments at the subnational level, there are two miracles that I talk to people about. Two miracles. Miracle number one. For tree cropping, all you need is open the ground and plant a tree. Then you go and sleep. The tree just begins to grow on its own, grow on its own without you doing anything. What is the miracle number two? Miracle number two is that of the 8 billion people in the world, almost all of them eat fruits in their raw state. That is just pluck that fruit and they will eat it. They will eat a mango raw, eat an orange raw, a pineapple raw, a guava raw, a, a cassa, I mean a banana raw. So in Nigeria, all we need to do is that we should just be opening the ground and planting trees, tree crops. And then when they start fruiting, we just pluck them and, and send them abroad. And they send us the dollars. We will not even bother about processing in the first instance. Until we start making enough money, then we set up processing plant. This can be done easily. Why is it not happening? Because the government is not giving the support. 
Well, um, I, I think that it's time where we begin to look at solutions to all of this. Uh, you are very vast and you understand the dynamics of our agriculture and our government and what we're struggling with. So, yes, what exactly do you think that we can do? We can engage. First of all, we take it in different strata in terms of policy formulation and implementation from the government angle. And then we come to individuals and, you know, corporate bodies or, you know, like the private sector. How can we engage to ensure food security in Nigeria? Thank you very much for that question. And this is an agenda that we are now setting for the for incoming government. So what are the solutions? The solution will come from the problems. What are the problems right now? The first problem now is that farmers are facing insecurity and they've been driven into IDP camps. The next government should immediately assure security for farmers to return to their farms. Even on, under these uh, conditions that they are, they are cultivating like in subsistence. Yes, um, uh, I, I, let me go to that video. I will return to the point we are making. That is me landing at Heathrow Airport. What you see in that picture is, like now, in the immediate uh, space now, you will see a forest. They have reserved a forest where nobody will cut the trees. You will see settlements. You will see water bodies. Check between all those three features. The land that is available is, a, is cultivated. You can see those farms totally cultivated. And the thing there is that one farm can be a crop farm. The next farm can be an animal farm. Animal farm and crop farms coexisting side by side without anybody murdering anybody. That's the thing you see. And what you see here is all over the country. You can fly from the south of the UK to the north, east and west. This is what you are going to see. Every available land cultivated. Just imagine that you fly from Sokoto to Lagos or from Medjugorje to Calabar, from uh, Ilori to, to, to Adamawa, all over Nigeria. We have cultivated our land like this. There will no longer be job insecurity. Because there will be so much jobs for people to do. There will be no full security. We will not even have a foreign exchange crisis. Because the money that we are using to go and import food, we will not be exporting food and making dollars out of it and developing our nation. And then the processing plants will be there to add value to this thing. So this is what I'm saying. So back to the point that we're making, uh, Mercy, uh, the solutions are going to come from the problem. So we talked about uh, insecurity. That has to be dealt with immediately by the incoming government so that farmers can be can can be returned back to where their farms are. Then number two, the output per farmer is so abysmally low because these farmers are cultivating with their waste, with their brute energy. We need to put schemes in place where farmers can rent agricultural machinery, use it to cultivate their farms, and when they harvest, they now pay back to to this uh, fund, uh, the, 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 the quantum of time they used for, for the machinery, then we need to have a processing and plant in Nigeria so that post harvest losses are curtailed. Then we need to make agricultural export easy. We know people who say, I want to export yams, I want to export this. And the whole uh, uh, shenanigans that happen at the port that frustrate people from exporting instead of government agencies facilitating export. These kind of things need to be there, you know? And then we, we, need, we need the government to come in with, uh, with, the, with the legal legal framework that governs all these things. If you have a country where there is a crisis about the president disobeying court orders, a national assembly going one way, a governors going the other way, Supreme Court going the other way, it doesn't augur well for investors. In their mind, they are thinking, how can I carry my money to a place like that? So all that has to be dealt with so that money can come in to develop agriculture in Nigeria. Agriculture is actually our greatest endowment. Our greatest endowment is agriculture. Mm. Uh, um, Nick, uh, one of the, the ways to really scale up, scale up um, the, the agriculture sector in the country, of course, you look at maybe fertilizer, for instance, we have some plans that have come up. Dangote is coming up. Uh, but another one is using science and technology to, you know, make better yields, faster yields, bigger yields, higher yields, um, you know, disease resistant, you know, crop um, uh, species and all that. Um, last week I was having a conversation on radio and uh, a couple of the listeners, because talking about 
you know, um, healthy lifestyle in terms of eating. And some of them express concern about uh, the beans that you have, they buy from the market these days. And um, that they said when they were growing up, you know, some years ago, you don't cook beans. It, they said it takes them a long time to cook that beans. It'll take a long time because beans is really hard. But they said these days, when they cook the beans, at least people in Lagos, within some minutes it gets done, soft. And they, don't, they think something is wrong. I could be thinking about the um, genetically modified beans that the government was trying to, to you know, introduce and do some studies on and all that. And what are your thoughts on using GM uh, uh, means to, to improve agricultural yield? Are you in favor of that? Because some people are against it, while some people look at the benefits. You know, you talk about Monsanto and all these uh, other establishments who are really powerful. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I, I'm not a scientist, so uh, I was trying to be corrected by scientists, but I believe that uh, any development, any scientific development that is coming, uh, we shouldn't just reject it on the first value. Uh, we should allow scientists to look into it, and then government uh, regulatory agencies should be able to examine it. And if they feel that uh, food that is produced uh, through GM means uh, is fit for human consumption, so be it. But if they have any issues with that, then they should ban it. But in Nigeria, you see, God has just blessed us so well. Because, you see, uh, our land is so fertile that you, you, you know, like, let me give you an example. I'm from Benue, but I went to university in Benin. But the, the first time I traveled to the then Bende state, I noticed that unlike in Benue, where we make hips first before we plant yam, those guys will just open the ground, put a yam seedling inside, and it will produce humongous uh, tubers of yam. That is how fertile our soil is. And we have a good climate to match. So uh, even without GM, Nigeria can still produce a high quality of food. And now that, that takes me to another point that you raised, research work. You see, uh, uh, we have a university in Makode. It was called University of Agriculture. I thought that that was a university that was meant to undertake research and improve on what the farmers are doing so that uh, instead of uh, planting yam once a year, they can, through research, make farmers to harvest yam twice a year, harvest rice three times a year, bring improved seedlings so that the yield will increase. That university hasn't done anything like that. Farmers are still tilling the soil and harvesting yam once. In fact, in our, I, I now realize that the university actually now uh, went and got a license to, to change them from a, a university of agriculture to a conventional university where they are now offering accounting, economics, and all of those kind of things. So that is an area that government needs to focus attention on. Mm. We need to fund research properly. Government needs to take care. There are so many agricultural research institutes in Nigeria. What are they doing? They need to come up with, with, uh, with, with products that, farmers, that will make farmers uh, yield higher, that will make farmers harvest uh, more frequently, and will make, uh, you know, if you go to a place like Israel, I went to Israel, in Israel, you see there are oranges now. The orange will not even be one feet high yet. It will start producing. It will start making fruit. That's the kind of thing we need in Nigeria. So that we, we, we can begin to unlock value from this fertile soil that God has given us. Oh. Uh, you remind me of the International Institute of uh, Tropical Agriculture, which uh, you have in different parts of the country. I um, uh, think spread around... Um, uh, uh, parts of I know there's one um, in in One Port Harcourt and they have they have fantastic uh, uh, species of, of of different kinds of crops you know and plants and uh, uh, sometimes to be, uh, people don't take advantage of these things <laughs> I don't know you know I remember Nick some years ago under a previous administration when the PDP was in power when they were trying to give some soft loans to farmers people who had you know, politicians and government officials are putting their brothers, their sisters, their children, you know, people who had no, no experience even planting anything in the soil, you know, and then they, they, they went for these loans and the rest is history. So we also have a role to play in all of this, you know. Um, these opportunities are there that people need to take advantage of um, um, so that they can, they can also uh, uh, grow uh, all right. the economy. Well, I, I think that um, th this is the point where we probably have to just, uh, you know, course this conversation down now. Nick Agule, thank you so much for being part of the show. 
Thank you very much. Uh, my last message to Nigerians. Today is uh, Monday, the 20th of uh, February. Uh, five days' time. In five days, we are going to the presidential polls. All of this that we are discussing now comes down to leadership. It's the right leadership that will give uh, due attention to agriculture, that will create jobs for our graduates. So if you're a young person, you're at home right now, you don't have a job, you have been carrying your CV up and down, go and make your voice heard on Saturday so that we elect leaders that will unlock value in this country and you will get that job and you will begin to build your own family and all of that. This thing lies in the ballot box. So please, let us go on Saturday, all of us. Don't be afraid of security, insecurity. The chief of the first staff has told us that this will be one of the most peaceful elections in Nigeria. They have it all together. And also know that the electoral law 2022 now safeguards our votes. Once you cast your vote, your vote will never be changed. It will come for the result. All right. Thank you, Nigeria. Thank do you. This. So you're not concerned about um, an interim national government, uh, you know, uh, maybe some sort of talk of um, the military stepping in, you know, like Aerofy said. You're not, you're not concerned about that. Well, uh, if uh, the chief of defense staff says that uh, uh, he, in, uh, in, in conjunction with the Nigerian police, which is a frontline uh, security outfit for the elections, and other security agencies are going to give protection to us, then we better uh, uh, hear him. Uh, is it not better that we brace the, we brave the insecurity threat and go and vote than sit in your house and still be killed by bandits or be kidnapped on a train or sit in a church and desert in the war and All still right. be killed? Thank you so much, Nika Gule. Uh, we do appreciate your time and, of course, we look forward to having you on other national and critical issues. Do have a great day. Thank you so much. I have a nice day. All right. Merci. Have you, thank you, Nick. Have you, have you, have you done some farming before? Well, Don't tell me you in school. That one is not farming. Have you done some farming before? Like I okay. own uh, farmland. Have you, have you not owned? Have you, have you done farming? Yes. I mean, for every time I've spent with my grandmother, I definitely okay. have to go to the you, farm. You have to go to the farm. What did you, what did you do at the farm? Climb the trees. <laughs> you climb the trees. <laughs> <laughs> I can see. All right. But you do plants. So you just, I just climb the trees and have fun. I harvested. <laughs> you don't you want me to be the arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I, I planted, uh, planted corn, planted cassava, uh, you know, maybe accidentally planted watermelon. You know, and uh, been around them planting, plant, you know, uh, what do you call it again? Carrots and uh, uh, groundnuts. You know, I love agriculture. I, I have a step groundnuts. Okay, you, I, you just want to have a thing. I have a I what I did was you know very criminal, but we have to move on. Yeah, uh, I have a state granite. I mean, my grandmother was very passionate about the farm. Wow, and uh, so it means you have it in you. I don't know what you're waiting for. No, I don't have it in me because I think that for every other time we <laughs> we fought about it, we struggled. It was right. always a fight, right. and for every time you take me to the farm, I would disappear. You never see me. Wow, you just uh, so I only return when we have to go back. <laughs> go back home. I see. I mean, I, 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 we, we, we love farming. We have to go, but um, I think we use something to encourage everyone out there. Don't wait for the government to tell you to make money. There's a lot of opportunity in agriculture, you know, and I think every young person out there who is looking for a job, let's find a piece of land. You know, in a very fertile place, and start farming, and you make your money. My name is Kofi Bartels. Follow us on our social media uh, platforms. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Plus TV Africa. When you get there, follow us, like us, subscribe, share, comment. We have a second YouTube account, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Kofi Bartels. Once again, good morning. We'll join the newsroom at nine o'clock for the news brief. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic Monday morning.